after you've gone and left me crying after you've gone there's no denying you seem blue you feel sad you miss the dearest pal you ever had there'll come a time now don't forget it there'll come a time when you regret it someday when you grow lonely your heart will break like mine and you want me only after you've gone after you've gone away no introduction world-class singer and we're here in the studio where we just recorded a series of instructional videos I think it was a uh, quite a challenge right you said it was a whole other world <laughs> it was <laughs> but thank you so much for doing this and uh, you can check it out on DC music school you find the link in the description box and um, I'm very very happy because this is the first time I produced um, singing lessons scat lessons I don't know if anyone has ever done anything like this before. Do you know what's out there in the market? or? I've never done anything like this before. But uh, other singers, have anyone done anything like that before? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so if not, like, check it out. Um, I know you said it was like very strange, very difficult because it's, it's quite technical in nature and I, I definitely agree. I'm not I'm not used to separating the melody the lyrics to that. the improvisation yeah yeah but nonetheless um, I personally do think the language is there when you were doing those um, definitely singing. and I do believe that a huge chunk of jazz music if not all of it is like a language is like vocabulary mm -hmm. and so you'll have lots of lots of vocabulary to study and even if you're not a singer in my opinion Cyril is the real deal she on top of being a, a singer she's also she sings like an instrumentalist and there's so much to learn whatever instrument you play so check it out um, <laughs> ask you a few questions actually I've known you for quite a long time we're not going to say how long because i we, we don't want to reveal our age just yet <laughs> so you just turned 18 right yeah sure <laughs> um but actually we know through common friends the uh the Django world the gypsy world in samas yosen can you talk about how it was growing up there in the south of paris so samoa it's about 40 kilometers south of paris or something can you talk about that like what was it like um it's beautiful, you know, it's the forest, the river, cobblestones, it's, uh, it was very, um, very lucky childhood. For those of you who don't know, Samwa Sosen was the last resting place of Django Reinhardt, the great uh, legendary jazz guitar player from France, 
and his descendants are still stationed there most of the year and how did you come to know the, the descendants of Django and how did the, yeah um i was i was 13 or 14 and i was hanging out i was with on my bike <laughs> and this this gypsy girl came and uh, asked me something and i couldn't understand because they have a very thick accent and i made her repeat it like three times she was <laughs> saying je peux faire un toir je peux faire un toir and i realized that she wanted to use my bike and uh, i said sure and then she called her three cousins and they all jumped on my bike and then they told me hey come on jump on it and we were all five of us on the bike and we went down the 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 rue pavé and then we were friends forever and then i started meeting their brothers who were the ones who played guitar and started learning some songs from the Django repertoire to sing with them and and uh, yeah that's how it that's how it all started so you often go to their campsite is that it and you play music together yeah were they telling you hey you should learn this song or you should play this or whatever or yeah they they knew that I spoke some English so they told me to learn songs that have lyrics because first I was friends with uh, Lumpy mm, he's a yeah. and he was teaching me guitar and in exchange I was teaching him to read and and one day Lum, uh, Lumpy's brother Dallas asked me to to learn a song called Sweet Sue and it was raining and we didn't all fit in the caravan so we went into this bus that was parked there and the rain was on the bus and the whole family was there and I sang Sweet Sue it was the first time that I sang in front of people and I just loved seeing all the smiles on the people's faces and and um, seeing how happy I made everybody and and then they called me Sweet Sue for a while after that and then yeah then I wanted to learn more songs after that and so like oh, that was still around 13 years old yeah 14 about, yeah till you went to New York right so that was like quite a number of years spent alongside yeah. those musicians that group of people did they did you pl perform a lot with them as well like in Fontainebleau or Paris or something I performed ar around around uh, not Paris but around in little towns and it's f it's funny because I at the time I used to wear big skateboarding shoes and baggy jeans with like just I was dressed like a guy and this man saw us play and he was like i'd like to invite you guys to play at my my jazz club but you gotta wear something different <laughs> and my mom took me to buy my first pair of heels um so yeah we started playing together around you know around samoa in little things that must have been quite like a magical moment for you like nostalgic or yeah, it's uh, it it was just super fun to to be around them. I was it was really about the energy, just because I I had heard that music since I was little, because of Samoa and there's a Django festival every year, and I I go to the festival and I, I heard the music, but I didn't really care about it. It's an it's not until I I met them and discovered their way of life and really understood that their music is the same than their way of life. It's the music of the present moment. And they live their music just like they live their life. They don't know where they'll be a week from now. And they're just very raw. That's how the music is, and, and that's what I fell in love with. It's really the, the presence. For those of you who don't know, a lot of these uh, gypsy musicians, they don't go to music school, they don't know theory, uh, they mm -hmm. don't know it's definitely not academic at all and it's really pure instinct yet they manage to play very beautiful music sometimes even intricate music and I guess it was the same for you and that's actually very similar to the jazz masters of the old days would you say how they learned it's not like you know 
this mode, this 13, you play this chord, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then you went to New York. Was that like a complete, like, 180 or something? Is that 180? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a different... Uh, well, you know, before going to New York, I was listening to Django and Ella, basically. And then I arrived to New York, and the first thing I hear in school is kind of blue. And it's like a whole nother sound that I had. I just these new colors that I didn't know about. So modal, you know. And it, it really like sucked me in completely. And when you were in school, you also went to a lot of jam sessions? Yeah, it was, it was hard because the school was pretty far. And, um, and the jam sessions start at one in the morning, which is when the last train ends. So I, I spent a lot of nights sleeping on the couches at Smalls and Fat Cat and waiting for the first train at six in the morning to go, go to back to school. Yeah. Holy moly. Did a lot of those nights. Um, <laughs> would you say more of your, who you are today as a musician, you learn more at school or from those jam sessions or both equal, like, like equal thing? I mean... I mean, school and jam sessions is a tiny part of how I learned. That was, you know, school was four years and the jam sessions was during those four years, maybe a little more after that. But, um, you know, the biggest school is life. But you got to really live it. You got to really be open to it. Um, traveling, meeting people, experimenting new things. Um, going places you haven't been um, in, you know, literally and, and metaphorically. Um, that's what's taught me a lot and is keeps teaching me a lot because it's not about what you know or how much you know. It's about how you use it, how you use what you do know because it makes no sense to just sit in a room and amass knowledge and then, oh, okay, I know this much, so now I'm ready. <laughs> if you know this much, but you know how to use it and you're honest in the way you use it, sky's the limit. So you started from, you know, this Django world to kind of a jazz world, and now obviously you're going into new directions. I guess it's, you're not really thinking about the view, you're just living it and just see where life takes you. Is that how it is, how you would describe it? Yeah. I mean, right now I'm mixing a, my next album, which is all original songs. And, you know, that's for me, that's new territory. I built a career on singing other people's songs that have had a stamp of approval for decades and decades. And and it took a lot of time and a lot of, of you know, personal growth for me to accept that I'm a, a songwriter. Um, and so that's my... That's my new. That's my new exploration. But I've been I've been exploring for a while, and I've been go, You know, I did musical theater. I did big band. I did duo. I did. I have like fifteen CDs to my name. So I don't think I'm done exploring. I'm sure you'll have uh, even bigger career as time goes on. And really, thank you so much for doing this. Thank well, you, my pleasure. Yeah. And what else can I say? Please check them out. Check out the lessons. They're great.